Sons and daughters, it's your favorite West Coast son of Saturday, Grace and Wimbish, checking in from beautiful, sunny California. Hey, I'm here to tell you that this week's West Coast report is brought to you by the Hub Blacksburg. Listen, y'all, this is going to be the premier off-campus housing in Blacksburg. When it is done in 2021, I'm talking state-of-the-art workout facility. I'm talking a pool that is literally the distance of Worsham Field. And I'm also talking creative and collaborative study lounges. It has like a super zen vibe. You can actually check all of this stuff out, the mock-ups, the, the floor plans and everything. Huboncampus.com backslash Blacksburg. Tell them the sun sent you. Give them a call. Shoot them an email. Do whatever you got to do. If I were still in school right now, this is where I'd be living next year, no doubt in my mind. And y'all, literally, like it's it's the cool, hip, and happening thing. They're the new guys on the block, so be sure to check them out. Uh, we could not be more fired up to be partnering with the Hub in Blacksburg. With that being said, please enjoy this week's West Coast Report. What's up, sons and daughters? Grayson Wimbish, Eric Avazar, back with another West Coast report. And, dude, could be the final West Coast report of this season, which is kind of sad. Uh, Eric, how you doing this week, man? How's work? How are things? You good? Work is good. This is my first time uh, using my headset on a preview show with you. You know, you have the nice, beautiful, sleek headset. I have the one that I use for my Zoom calls at work. You know, I work in customer support uh, for a market research company. But right now, I feel like uh, I'm at Verizon. Verizon customer service. How can I disappoint you today? <laughs> <laughs> I love so, it, man. The I sound is much better, I hope. I apologize to all the viewers last week who had to listen to my awful sound. Hopefully, this will be much nicer, crisper, and clearer for everybody a hundred percent and you know i got the headphones in right now and i can already attest it i mean it sounds so much better you, you kind of sound like like an airline pilot right now you sound like we'll uh be experiencing some some mild turbulence and who knows maybe uh maybe that will transfer over into this weekend might encounter some mild turbulence we got a big one this week eric the most important game of the year facing the virginia cavaliers the wahoos of charlottesville big rivalry matchup uh the Cavaliers coming to Lane Stadium Saturday evening, 8 p.m. Another primetime matchup. They are five and four. We are four and six now after our loss to the Clemson Tigers last Saturday. And to be to be fair, that one did not turn out as bad as you or I thought it was going to. You know, I said 62 to 14. You said that they were going to score at least 60 points, and that didn't happen. So I, I guess, you know, all things considered, that was good. I guess. Um, but, you know, let's go ahead and jump right into it, Eric. Keys to the game on offense against the Wahoos. Bronco, Bronco Mendenhall's team uh, is without its star defensive player, uh, Charles Snowden. He actually broke his right ankle and is out for the season. Charles is an incredible football player. I think, in my, in my calm objective opinion, is the most talented player on Virginia's defense. Uh, so that's huge for us. So what are the keys offensively for you? Well, the one bright spot in an otherwise dark season for Virginia Tech football, without question, has been Khalil Herbert. I called it last week. Khalil Herbert was going to score the first touchdown of the game for us. I didn't realize that it would be the only touchdown of the game for the Hokies, but that uh, did happen indeed. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe he is the only 1,000-yard rusher of the Justin Fuente era. So Herbert has been uh, an outstanding performer for the Hokies at running back. And, you know, the Virginia Tech football program that we grew up watching was predicated on a strong run game. So sure. if the Hokies can uh, dominate the line of scrimmage early on, get Herbert going, even get uh, Raheem Blackshear going, I think that'll go a long way. But of course... Uh, you know, they're going to have to figure it out from a passing standpoint to who knows who's going to start at quarterback for the Hokies on Saturday. But one thing we do know is that Khalil Herbert needs to carry the ball early and often. I agree. I agree. That will be paramount. You know, like I said, without Charles Snowden, that's huge. Uh, and, 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 you know, Charles Snowden is right over the middle there. Uh, and, and that is huge for opening up holes, trying to expose their defensive secondary, Khalil Herbert has done that to plenty of defenses this season. Uh, you know, 
I don't know if Hendon Hooker is going to start on Saturday. I don't know if Braxton Burmeister is going to start on Saturday. I don't know if it's going to be Knox Kadem. I really, I have no idea. But whoever it is had better be ready to go from from the jump. Because, Eric, last year you and I did not watch the UVA game together. You were home for Thanksgiving. I was still in L.A. That was one of the worst days of my entire life. We have to have to execute offensively on Saturday for us to even stand a chance of winning this game. Uh, you know, UVA has a high-powered offense. Brennan Armstrong, very talented quarterback. We have to – we got to go toe-to-toe there. Whoever is under center, that's the most important thing. they got to show up and be ready to play. And the guys on the field, guys like Khalil Herbert, guys like James Mitchell, guys like Trey Turner, hopefully if he's healthy and he's playing – they have to rally around whoever is under center on Saturday. So that's that's the key. Defensively, what do you what do you got? Brennan Armstrong for the Wahoos is a talented quarterback, 6'2, 215 pounds. What do we have to do to slow him down? Well, you know what I found interesting, Grayson, about Brennan Armstrong is not only has he thrown for quite a few yards this season, you know, over 1,800, he's also the team's leading rusher. And oddly enough, UVA's leading receiver from a yardage standpoint is their starting running back, Billy Kemp. So that tells me that the Hokies should be blitzing. They should be playing extremely aggressive and they should force UVA to beat Virginia Tech with their wide receivers because their wide receivers are just not that productive. A wide receiver theoretically should lead the team in receiving yards. Our running back should theoretically lead the team in rushing yards. So this UVA offensive attack, at least from a numeric standpoint, is highly unconventional. So that means that the pressure should be coming early and often. I would love to see the lunch pail defense emerge from the ashes this weekend. And if nothing else, have Bud Foster tell the Hokies this week how important this rivalry is. We hate UVA, plain and simple. We cannot stand the thought of another loss to the Wahoos. And it's just so important to channel that energy uh, towards victory. So whether it's via Zoom or in person, I hope Bud Foster is getting uh, the troops fired up this week. Even if he's no longer on the staff, these players, you know, the, uh, the alums, the former staff, everyone is talking this week about how important this game is, even if it's just for pride. The defense is the cornerstone of Hokie Stone, you know, the, the hokey stone mentality, I guess you could say, sure. and just the lunch pail defense and the aggressive mentality that will have to come out in Lane Stadium on Saturday. I love I love that that idea. You know, it makes me wonder if Coach Justin Puente has reached out to Coach Foster uh, and said, hey, you know, pop into a Zoom meeting, pop into a socially distant team meeting and rile the guys up. I You know, I, I believe he's done that several times with Coach Frank Beamer in the past. Uh, and And if that doesn't inspire you, I don't know. Coach Foster's an intense guy. I don't know what will. <sighs> Defense, you mentioned that Brennan Armstrong is their leading rusher. Uh, sons of, I did not know that. That is uh, cause for concern because you know how we do with scrambling quarterbacks. You say we have to blitz. I say we have to blitz, but someone's got to stay at home. Someone has to spy. Someone has to clog the middle and wait for Brennan Armstrong to run because it's going to happen. You saw Bryce Perkins single-handedly dismantled our entire defense last season by himself. You can't, good luck telling me otherwise, he won them the football game last year. It was him on his legs. That cannot happen this year. The game is at home right now because of COVID. That doesn't mean anything. This is where my head's at, Eric. Forget what the postseason looks like with all the drama on the Twitter TL right now. Forget forget the record of four and six. Forget all the games you've lost. This game means the most out of any all season long. And if I'm in that locker room, I'm playing for the logo on my helmet. I'm playing for the fella next to me. And I'm playing to beat UVA's ass. That's it. And I'm playing... Most importantly, par- most paramount to get that cup back. That hardware belongs in our trophy cases. We are the ones who are supposed to show that off to recruits when they come to Blacksburg. So it's time to get it back. Trey Turner's been tweeting his pin tweet all season long. All off season long was, 
Enjoy your vacation, CC. I'll see you real soon. And it's been funny because he's been tweeting down the line. He's like, we're going to have so much catching up to do. And I hope that that is true. That said, who scores the first touchdown? The first touchdown will come from Raheem Blackshear. He's going to get the ball in space. He's going to break free. And uh, look, let's finally hope the offense will be aggressive for a change, make plays downfield, and open up the playbook. But look, I have a good feeling that Blackshear is going to have a good game on Saturday. I, You know, that's an interesting pick. I don't think we've picked Raheem Blackshear all season to have the first touchdown. Would love to see that, though. Maybe – uh little screen out to the flat, get him involved, and he just you know runs 10 yards into the end zone. I could actually see that. I think that's a phenomenal pick. I think it all comes down to who's under center, but I, 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 I actually think that it's going to be Braxton Burmeister. For some reason, I just have a hunch that Henboss will not start Saturday, and if that's the case and Burmeister's ready to go, I, I predict a rushing touchdown from number three. We'll see what happens. You know, it's it's interesting, Eric. I, I because of this record and because of the way this season is going, I have I said it on the podcast. I have no reason to feel good about this game, but I just do, and that kind of scares me. If I'm being completely honest with you, what are what how what are your thoughts? Where, where's your head out, and 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 what's your final score prediction? Kind of what's what's the T? as they like to say up there in Charlottesville. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. You know, I feel good about this game, honestly, because I feel as if I have no choice but to feel good about it. You know, there's only one thought that comes to mind, no matter how good or bad this Virginia Tech team is, UVA must be beat. And after the incredible streak that the Hokies were able to put together and seeing it come to an end the way it did last year, it's, it's hard to believe that it came to an end the way it did. But on the other hand, the Hokies were able to gut out so many close games year after year. Uh, Lane Stadium's home field advantage is certainly not going to be what it traditionally is, but I still think it's an advantage. And the Hokies are going up against UVA team that has a clunky four-game winning streak. That four-game winning streak of UVA includes a uh, two postponed games in there. So it's been an unusual streak that they've been able to put together. Of course, the most impressive one of the bunch was UNC, but it's going to be close. I think no matter what happens, it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a dogfight. I don't think it's going to be high scoring because neither offense is that good. I'm taking the Hokies to win this one 27-23. 27-23. I like it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with you, man. The UNC... When, how, however, they squeaked that one out doesn't make any sense to me. A lot of the, a lot of the wins that they've had don't make any sense to me. But you know, they're I, I, I think that they're a decent football team. They're not the football team that they were last year, and that's because number three isn't under center anymore. But they're about on our level. I, I, I think we can look them directly in the eye. No one is taller or bigger uh, or has a, an extreme upper hand in this one. It's very evenly balanced. I think this one is anyone's game. It really just comes down to how emotional do we play on Saturday? Do we care? Do we come out like we care? Because last year it kind of seemed really like we didn't. We just didn't play with a lot of intensity. And this game is known for that. If the guys get off and they play pissed off, I want my cup back. You're our little brother and you always will be. I think we win the football game. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm concerned. This game always makes me nervous, but I'm going to go 24 to 17 Virginia Tech. I'm with you. Also think it's a low scoring game. It'll be, it'll be a battle of the defenses and a battle of uh, mistakes. I think both teams probably have a couple of turnovers each. We'll see what happens. It's a night game. It'll be cold again. So someone get Hendon Hooker a blanket. Please. I know he was cold. That doesn't do it for me. Protect your starting quarterback when even when he's not when he's not on the football field, please. 
Um, but other than that, man, that's going to do it for this week. I hope that you and I can get on here after it's done and, and, and toast when it's done. Uh, I'm nervous about it. I know you're, you're a little bit nervous about it. Uh, we will be watching together on Saturday, getting our COVID tests, making sure that we can facilitate such things. Uh, so I am excited, but that's all sons and daughters go Hokies. It's rivalry week. Get excited. Take care and peace.